Uh, speaking about people who have to escape, you mentioned that one of the things you wanted to chat about that I don't think we've ever chatted about is your little brother's story of escaping from Scientology. Are we talking about are we talking about Nathan? We're talking about Nathan, yes. So what's Nathan's story? So okay, so Nathan was Nathan was at the uh, Flagland base. This is Nathan uh, Tompkins, by the way, right? What? He, uh, his name's Nathan Tompkins. Nathan Tompkins. He's he's the same age and group as as Laura Anderson. So that that was that was kind of his his age and his grouping. Uh, at one point, when the international, well, how, how much ranch, younger is that than you? Sorry to interrupt, but how much younger is that than you? Uh, Nathan's eight years younger than me, so he's like uh, just he's turning thirty nine, I think thirty eight, thirty nine. Nathan had when they disbanded the international ranch. Um, and I believe this is when they sent uh, some kids down to the L.A. area uh, that really the biggest troublemakers, I think, went down to the L.A. area. And and I should have brought the picture. I have a picture of the last day I saw Nathan um, before he left. Uh, it's, it's in my room. I got to pull it out so I can put it up next time. Actually, maybe I'll just bring it out and and show it on camera. Uh, so oh, everyone gets so. A so even though he's your brother. Because he's eight years younger than you, even when you were officially a Sea Org member at the Int base, he was still a cadet at the Int ranch. And they sent him away back to L.A. even though you were still there? They sent him to Flag. Even they sent though, him away from you? Sent him away from me, Foster, and Barbara. Jesus. Yeah. And that was Dave. That was 100% Dave. Dave was like, okay, time to get rid of the ranch. Let's get rid of it. Uh, he just didn't want, he didn't want the headache of, of the kids there and the, and the trouble they had caused. And, and I think, uh, you know, the, you had the, the RPF was out there at the same time. It was just becoming a nightmare. Uh, I think there had been a, a news story that had gone out there and different things like that. I was not there. I was at Golden Air Productions at the time, but of course I heard about these things. Nathan was one of the people that did a lot of the farming with all the kids. And, you know, maybe other people have better stories that I didn't, again, that was not on my radar. I just, I would sometimes pop out when the parents would pop out on Sunday morning to see my little brother. Mm. Um, so he gets sent to, he gets sent to Florida and he's in, he's in Florida. Uh, you know, he went through various posts and stuff like that. And I believe somewhere around 2000, I want to say 2008, 2009, I'm not going to be exact on the years. I apologize. Um, I had left already. I had, uh, been through, several different jobs, several different cities I lived in. I was now uh, living in the Burbank area and I was actually working uh, for Mark Headley uh, doing different projects. Uh, and, and one of my closest friends, uh, Shane Clark, and I were actually working together for Mark Headley. Shane Clark also is, is um, another person that's about Nathan's age. Uh, and <clears throat> Shane Clark's brother, Kerry Clark and I were like best friends because we were the same age. So it was funny. Shane was Nathan's age and Shane Clark. So he, Shane was to was was like my kind of like my little brother at the same time, but also one of my closest friends. So I didn't even know Shane had a brother. Is he still in science? Is his brother is, still in Scientology? He is, and we wish he would get out because he is he's one of the nicer people. Wow. Um, and, and just a good person. Uh, Kerry has Clark. Shane has Shane ever said if he interested in coming on at all? I've spoken to Shane about it. He 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 said he might be interested in it. I know he watches a lot of the content. Uh, I would love to get him on here, and I have asked. Uh, I just don't think he's ready or in a position right now. Which again, that's that's his choice. Uh, you know, he was in that um, over the rainbow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, him and Nathan were in that actually. Right, right, right. Uh, which, by the way, I told them when they told me about it, <laughs> not to do it. <laughs> I said. Who is it? Did you ask? Who's the like? What are you doing? Like, don't go on camera if you don't know who these people really are. Um, and so, you know, it sounds like a mean big brother thing to do, but I do laugh at them from time to time about doing that because it was so absurdly bad, uh, especially their little parts. But anyways, um, the uh, so Nathan's in Florida. I have left the Sea Org. I'm living in L.A. And you know, from time to time, Nathan would call me for a PTS situation where I think he 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 had been in an interview and, and he had said that my, my older brother Sterling's not paying his freeloaders debt. So he had to call me with an MAA with an ethics officer on the line and get me to just say that I would pay my freeloaders debt. And, uh, that backfired tremendously. Um, because, uh, the funny enough, some people have different views on this, but the one thing that I knew for sure I would never do was pay a one thin dime to Scientology. I always was under the frame of mind that they owed me money 
because I didn't get paid so many times when I was in Golden Air Productions. So giving them any money to me was like just absurd. I, I just wouldn't believe it. So he's on the phone trying to get through his PTS handling and get me just to say, I didn't have to do just to say that I would pay my freelance debt and I wouldn't do it. And we ended up getting in a big fight and I ended up yelling at him. Um, and he ended up- You were still technically in good standing at this point. Otherwise I he wouldn't even bother calling you, right? Yeah, yeah. What, what were your thoughts about uh, not paying your debt, but doing your lower conditions to the Sea Org? Never. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> I was the same way. I were said- you? Well, I figured I said, they who, me. I mean- I said, yeah. which one of you guys didn't look at the lower conditions? You can't leave the Sea Org and then do lower conditions to the Sea Org. That's the opposite. Right. If you're coming up through doubt, you decide whether to stay in the Sea Org or leave. Yeah. <laughs> if you leave, you don't do conditions to the group you left. It doesn't make any sense. No, and I love how you see that's that's one thing that's fascinating. This is why one of the reasons why I like talking to you. We have lot we've applied logic to certain parts of, of Scientology in our lives while there. And then and then also there's the emotional parts we applied to it. So I wouldn't have thought about that particular point of, of the doubt formula being inapplicable. I personally wrote off the ethics conditions about 10 years earlier. I could not stand them. I thought I was, I was acutely aware that they were the most, they were the stupidest thing ever invented. <laughs> I had on my computer formatted copies of each thing that I would just reprint each, each week. So if I had an emergency <laughs> condition, it would be that one, but I had two alternates. So it didn't look like I was just printing out the same thing every time. I couldn't stand him. Like I thought it was such a, a mental masturbation uh, that that I was just like, no, I'm not. I'm going to print it off so you think that's what I'm doing. I couldn't stand it uh, at all. Um, yeah. Okay, so but, you were like, I'm never paying my free letter debt. And Nathan, oh. they kept making Nathan bug you about it. Yes, yes. Now, eventually, somewhere along the line, Nathan had gotten fed up with, with being there. And he has, he would have to tell you the, the whole story about that because I don't remember what, kind of pushed him over the edge. But um, essentially one day I get a call from Nathan. He's like, hey, I'm in Dallas. I'm at a hotel. I just, I, I, I left Sterling. Uh, I'm coming to see you in LA um, and I, I'm, I'm gonna see you. So look, at, I, I really love my little brother. We, at that point we had a very, very close connection. I really missed him. And I was, I was so excited about seeing him. I was like, oh my God, my brother's going to be here. Shane, I'm with Shane. We, we can, you know, we can, we can have a blast. We can have a good time. He's going to be out. I finally got some of my family back. And um, I said, okay, you stay there. He goes, his flight got delayed in, in Dallas. So from Tampa, he got put in Dallas. There was a thunderstorm. He got delayed in Dallas. So he was going to be there overnight. So you stay there. When you arrive in LA the next day, I'll be there to pick you up. Mark, I had spoken to Mark Headley. And he already lined up a job for Nathan to work with him. So Nathan would, and then uh, as being a member of the Aftermath Foundation, you understand how scary that can be coming out into the real world and not having anything lined up. So the fact that Mark had lined up something for Nathan, I mean, that's an instant thing where he can, he'll make more money his first day out <laughs> than he made in the previous three months combined. And he for would sure. have an instant yeah. place to stay. He would have family, all this sort of thing. So Nathan's in, in Dallas. I say, Hey, just, just stay, you know, stay clear of everyone. Don't talk to anyone. Just stay in there. Catch your flight the next day. That night I'm over at Mark Headley's house, uh, in Burbank with Claire. And, and I think they had, uh, two young sons at that time. And, uh, we're just talking, shooting the shit. I, I telling Mark the whole story. Of course, Mark was excited about it, you know, and, uh, all of a sudden we get a call from an old friend uh, of mine, a person that I had stayed with when I originally left the C organization back in 2005. Uh, his name was Daniel Christian. Um, now Mark, mm. yeah, yeah. Mark has later on with the spy files proven that Daniel Christian was a double agent. At the time we did not know for sure. Of course, Mark with his sixth sense had guessed that that was the case. I was suspicious because I hadn't spoken to Daniel Christian in over six months. And on the night, on the day that I find out my little brother's leaving, Daniel Christian, who lives in Orange County, uh, is, hey, let me come up and hang out with you guys. So uh, being a little naive, we let him come hang out with us. How uh, did he know? What? How did he know? Okay. So if you remember, and Mark's discussed this several times and so have other people on their channels, Scientology has its own travel agent booking 
that can access the travel agency uh, uh, websites, which allow you to look at the itineraries on airplanes. Right. So of course they knew Nathan had left and they knew that he was on a flight with a stopover in Dallas coming to Los Angeles. He had nobody in Los Angeles, but me. Mm. So simple math, uh, which some Scientologists are good at, uh, is that he's coming to see me. So Daniel's there just to report on it. And obviously the, the subject of any conversation that night was Nathan. So I guess they knew he was there. They knew what our position was on it. And um, the next day hits, I'm waiting for Nathan to call me to talk about his uh, uh, arriving, when his flight was going to be exactly. And I don't hear from him. I don't oh, hear no. from him for three months, Aaron. No. So, yes. So now I am, I am, I am distraught. I am upset. So when I know his scheduled flight doesn't arrive at a certain time or he wasn't on it or he hasn't contacted me, I call the Clearwater police. Uh, and this may have been the first time I ever did anything to be declared essentially besides leaving the Sea Org. Cause I called the Clearwater police and I said, please do a welfare check. I want you to find out if he's there. I want you to find out where he is. I told him the exact story of what happened. Um, and the whole thing that they got back to me, they say, he's okay. Uh, you know, he's, he's, uh, oh, sorry. This must've been a couple days after that. I called the, the, uh, Clearwater PD. Cause I knew that he would still be in Dallas. I think I called him two or three days later when I still hadn't heard from him. Um, long story short, they, they checked, they said he was okay. So I eventually found out about three months later when Nathan contacted me, what happened? And here's what happened. They had found out through the booking agency that he was in Dallas. They took Barbara uh, and flew her out to Dallas to intercept him. And his mom, him. You, you're both of your mom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry. Barbara is, is my stepmother who raised me and Nathan's biological mom making Nathan my half brother. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't like me using the phrase half brother, <laughs> tough shit. Um, you have to know this, but this is where it gets in, uh, interesting to know yeah. that because Nathan is your half brother, right? Jenna Miscavige is your half sister, right? Nathan and Jenna are not related. They're both related to you. They grew up together at the ranch, but they are not related. They never considered themselves brother and sister ever. Like it just wasn't a, like Benjamin Rinder was a closer family member to Jenna than Nathan was hmm. just by, by association with Mike Rinder and stuff. So um, they sent, they sent Barbara to Dallas to catch him on the layover. Yep. Wow. Got him in the hotel room, talked him out of everything. And this gets crazy. And I believe, and you know, it's funny. I don't know how I've never told the story, told the story, Aaron. It gets even crazier than that. And, and, and Nathan may have been the very first person this happened to, which was very interesting. I mean, of course, look, they wanted to keep anyone away from, from me. And, and by proxy, really, they want to keep people away from Ronnie and Biddy, I think, more than anyone else. They just did not want that group building. Uh, and, and even though Nathan's not related to Ronnie and Biddy, by association to me, he would have been because they knew that I talked to Ronnie and Biddy at the time for sure. They knew Justin did. I honestly can't remember if Jenna was out yet at this point. Maybe only she would know. Uh, you can ask her. Um, but he goes back. He's there. He eventually get a call three months later. He tells me the whole story. I'm just like, I'm like blown away. Like, I can't believe it. And I, and I yell at I, I, I was upset at him. So I yelled him on the phone. I'm like, dude, how could you not call me back? How could you make me wait? I had no clue what happened to you. I called the Clearwater police. What's the deal? He tells the whole story. Now, he's telling me the story three months later because he's back. They almost convinced him to resolve the situation because like me, he had a close enough attachment to his parents that he understood the consequences of blowing, which is an unauthorized leave from the C organization. He knew that they may declare him and he did not want to lose contact with Foster and Barbara, really more Barbara. Nathan never really had a great relationship with, with his dad. Uh, he was younger, but Barbara, he had a very tight relationship with. So he didn't want to lose that. So that's why he even agreed to go back and everything like that. What happens is when he's back in, in, in Florida, he eventually just gets so fed up with the whole thing. He's like, no, I'm leaving. I'm out. They send Barbara to New York where Nathan goes to live with him, to keep an eye on him. It is the first time that I know of where they sent, and Barbara was a Sea Org member. They sent her to just stay with Nathan, just to keep him in New York and keep him away from me in Los Angeles. 
Wow. Nathan did not believe that because I now, now on a regular basis, I'm talking to Nathan, right? And we're talking back and forth. And and uh, I'm like, you know, Nathan, the reason you're in New York? No, I wanted to go to New York. I said, no, you went to New York because that's where they selected it. The reason you're in New York is to keep you away from me. He goes, I, I don't believe that. I'm like, it's absolutely the case. Why would you go to New York, man? Like your brother's in LA. And I get you're with your mom. And I get that, by the way, uh, Nathan, uh, uh, Barbara had a sister. Barbara's family's from Long Island. And um, Barbara's uh, sister lived up there and had a house. So they, they stayed at that house for the first little bit before getting an apartment together. Yes, Nathan got an apartment with his mom in New York when he first, after after staying with the mom, which is so kind why of didn't awesome. he why didn't he call you? No, he did. So he was talking to me through these points. No, 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 no. Yeah from the airport why didn't he call you and let you know his he was his he wasn't taking that flight to la i don't know oh okay i thought that's what you'd asked him uh no uh no i i think i asked the question but i asked it and with not expecting an answer knowing what it was more of a why didn't you call me i'm i'm upset at you for not doing it mm. Yeah, no, I, I kind of guess I knew the answer, right? I get it, I get yeah, it. I, I really didn't know the answer to that one, but I was upset that it so, took so long. Let me ask you another question here. Yeah. That time when he's calling you, I'm in Dallas. You know, you're in LA. I know you're working for Headley. We all know Headley as the Mark Headley he is today, but there was a period when he was out of Scientology where he was still not declared. He was still technically in good standing. Yeah. So this time when you were working for him, like was this before he had come out as blown for good? Was this, do you, or was he already declared SP? Were you already declared SP working for Mark? I, I was, he was declared for sure. I think they had figured out who he was at this point. Um, I don't know what my status was. Okay. Uh, okay. Based but, on what Mark, you were working me, for yeah. someone that, I mean, you were at least not in good standing. Probably. I would say so. And, and, and Mark, after reading the spy files has told me that at this point in time, Osa was acutely aware that I just wanted to find some work and we're going to work on a project to get me a job somewhere because they knew my main beef was was when, when they said, why are you talking to Mark? I said, because he offered me a job. What do you want me to do? I got to live. And they knew that was a, that was something that was a problem. But what they didn't know is that I would never work for anyone they connect me up with because I knew inherently that would just be a, a reporting device. <laughs> Did you freeze, but, Sterling? Oh, no. No! <laughs> you, know, I got my, you know what? Okay, I, I'll be back. One second. <sighs> it's oh the worst. God. If you got to bring yourself out of the chat for a second and come back in, go for it. I think I got to completely close it. Hopefully, I don't close your stream. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, you won't close my stream. Um, I'll uh, hit some <laughs> hit some super chats here until he comes back. Hey, Aaron, uh, did you get my second email this morning? Well, I don't count them, Jen, but if you send it to me, I got it. I, I, I do remember seeing some from you. So the answer is the answer is yes, but I couldn't tell you that I remember what it's about right now. But but yes, um, yeah, I'll check it out. Spike. Z -z -z -z. If the court awards limited visitation to Danny, will Bijou be allowed to comply? Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. She would be allowed to comply. She would have to comply. It would be the law. When it comes to custody issues with children, um, Scientologists are allowed to follow the law. Uh, now, uh, if Bijou continues to be a Scientologist in good standing and, and is accompanying her daughter to visitation visits with Danny, she would most likely be possibly declared a version of PTS, PTS type A, which means she could still be a Scientologist, but wouldn't be allowed to get auditing or do courses in the meantime. Uh, th those are two possible outcomes. All right, let's bring Sterling back in. Hey, look, you're unfrozen. <laughs> I think I think Chrome goes, this guy's talking too long. Here, let's freeze him up for a second. It's so weird that your thing does that after like 30 or 60 minutes, right? And it didn't do it the other day. And I've even hardwired my, uh, with a Cat6 cable, I've hardwired my, so it's just Chrome. Chrome wow. is the thing that's feeling, not StreamYard, Chrome just keeps going, okay, you know what? We're, we're done with you. Um, wow. I've looked up to try to figure out what it is, but hey, at least my lights don't go out behind me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's pick it up um, wherever you want to pick up there. With uh, uh, the, um, uh, uh, Barbara had accompanied Nathan to New York, and then what happened after that? Okay, so she's up there with him in New York. Um, I believe it's going on two years. At one point, uh, I took a flight there. I was like, I'm going to go visit, and of course, uh, they sent uh, my dad Foster there to meet us, so it wasn't... <laughs> It wasn't a Sterling and Nathan getting together to talk. Foster and Barbara were always there. 
These guys uh, are terrible. I know. it's And they try to pretend like that wasn't the case. I'm like, really? <laughs> well, I just happened to be in town dropping by. Yeah, yeah I, get, I got the time <laughs> off. Yeah. No. And, and and they tried to with that. But, and, and it was a little bit of a concerted effort from Foster and Barbara to try to get me uh, back on track to some degree. They were trying to convince me. And, I'll, and a very funny line I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I said to Barbara, I said to Barbara, you know, I, I don't get how you still work there. Dave is like a mafia boss. He, he runs the place ruthlessly. And uh, she said to me, well, that's not so bad. That's remember that's so my mom was acutely aware growing up. I loved mafia movies. I also was a little bit interested in the whole concept of Casa Nostra and the, the, the whole thing. It was it was fascinating to me. Um, being a true crime fan and all that kind of stuff. And so she was trying to, well, that's not so bad. I mean, Dave's like that. Just, just, just like, you know, a uh, lucky Scar or Scarface was, and she was trying to do that Scientological thing where she was making sure her reality met my reality. But in the end, she was also comparing David Miscavige <laughs> to a mafia, a, a ruthless mafia boss. And I'm like, you know, that's not working, right? <laughs> did she really compare him to Pacino and Scarface? She did. It, it, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and maybe it wasn't, maybe it was Gambino. I can't remember the Gambino. I can't He's remember. He's like, which. say yeah. hello to my little friend. And you're like, your little friend, Dave, who are we talking yeah, about? Right. <laughs> that would be perfect. Um, anyway, so, so I go visit them and clearly they just want to protect Nathan another year and a half or something goes by. Nathan says, I'm moving to LA. And I was like, and, and at that point, and he may disagree with me, but I distinctly remember him going, yeah, I'm just, it's stupid. I'm just, I, I don't know why I came here in the first place. The weather's cold, you know, it's, uh, it's sunny California. Come on. I mean, it's, you got year round sports and, and skiing. And so Nathan was like, I'm coming over. Well, at this point I was, I was now in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so I would come back for summers and maybe, uh, once for winter. Uh, just to come back to the States and, and do the thing. So I, I saw him in the summer and he was still living with Barbara at this point. And um, in LA or in New York? In LA now, in LA. She she spent years living with Nathan in both locations? Yep. How did I never realize this? That is- Oh, crazy. and it's worse there. And you know that, you know that nightmare everyone has where, they, where they've left Scientology and the Sea Org or the Sea Org and yeah. they're living a normal life? Yeah. And then they're back? They go back. She's yeah. actually lived that. She spent two years with freedom. She was working at a, a grocery store. She was making her own little money. She was obviously reporting to Osa on Nathan, making sure everything was okay, but then was living a normal life with him. She loved reading. She would go out of walks at the park. Oh and my then, God. And then something happened. I'll tell you that in a second. And then she went back to Sierra. So she, all of a sudden she was back to morning musters, um, control, oh control, God. weekly like, conditions, formulas, meter checks. Oh, can you imagine? That's what I was, get, that's what I was gonna ask you. I was like, was she, did she have a job? Did she have a life? She had a life and she had a job and she got to see her sister before she passed and all this stuff. And then she went back, but I'll tell you how she went back. So, okay. so uh, I, I'm coming for the summer. Nathan's now living in LA. I'm super happy about it. Of course, now I'm four or 5,000 miles away in Saudi Arabia. So, you know, not great timing, but, um, I I'm there and Foster Foster comes to visit. I'm at Nathan's apartment. I'm staying with him while I'm while I'm in the states, and uh, this is the first time Foster goes on a roll about my Facebook and my Instagram connections. This is where <laughs> he goes. I want to see who you're talking to, and I didn't care. I was like, Yeah, go ahead. You know, he's he's sitting on my computer looking. I'm like, Well, what about this? What about this? Uh, what about Mark Headley? What about Matt Price? What about these people? And I said, Yeah, they're my friends. He goes, Well, I don't think you should be talking to him. I said, Well, I'm not a member of your church either. So, what's your problem? <laughs> And he's like, well, they're, they're attacking my church. They're, you know, it's kind of like if your family was Jewish, Sterling, and you're hanging out with Nazis. <laughs> and I, I went, are you really comparing yourselves to, to the persecution of the Jewish people? That's what really you think. And you think that my friends are the Nazis in this, in this scenario? I'm like, Dad, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And you're a smart guy. No, that's not the case. And he goes, well, I said, no, well, not. I, I am a grown man. Those are my friends. I know them because your church says they're bad does not mean I think they're bad. I make my own opinion on people. My opinion is based on my experiential track with them. And that guy, Mark Headley, he gave me a job when I needed one. So it's not happening. And I'm sorry if you have a problem with that. That's your problem, not mine, because I'm willing to talk to you. I'm willing to have a relationship with you, but it's not going to be controlled by Scientology. Okay. So that didn't go over really well with them, obviously. Uh, 
the nice thing, and I got to give Nathan props for this, is that he did understand that we were brothers. And no matter what, no matter what Foster and Barbara told him, and they did tell him to disconnect from me, he said, no, Sterling's my brother. Eventually, Barbara was still living with him. She was riding a scooter around LA. I don't know what job she had in LA. She broke her leg while uh, riding a scooter. I think she ran into a telephone pole. Um, and I don't mean to laugh at that, but it's a little bit funny. Uh, and because uh, she's OT7. Uh, but she, I think, has no way of paying for that. She has no medical insurance and nothing else. So she has to go back to the church for help on that. And because of that, she goes back into the C organization. Wow. Which is a nightmare. And let's be clear. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a few chances to take a poke at Barbara. Uh, but all in all, Barbara is, is a, a, a perfect example of a person who is actually good natured, who actually likes people and wants to help people, but just got into the wrong cult or into a cult. She, <laughs> <laughs> she really is a genuinely nice person. Um, and I, and I, and I do love her. And even though she cut all my, she cut my face out of all the family pictures, I still forgive you. And I still love you, Barbara. Uh, and I still, you know, I touch still, with her family. Do you know, I still don't know if I have any idea who Barbara is. Like I, like you <clears> must <throat> know her. You've met I her. Don't, you just don't remember. Did you tell me that she was working in the, in the, the pack canteen for a while? And I might recognize her from there. Yes. Do, do, did I, you even you send me a photo? I just don't recall. I feel like you, I feel like we've had this conversation, this exact conversation and you sent me photos of her and, um, I'm, I'm going to look through our, our, our text history real quick. Uh, but anyhow, I don't mean to, I don't mean to, 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 to track the conversation. No, um, no, please. Because, because it would be interesting if you had a, any sort of experience with her, um, you might lend credence to my, my concept of that, that she is a genuinely nice person and you're going to find everyone. So, but she would have worked for PAC estates. Like, remember I was only in LA from 2002 to 2006. So, okay. She would have um, been there somewhere around there. Yeah. But like as the canteen, I see. No, no. So she would, I think she was a canteen. I see when she went back, I think she was a staff auditor. Um, At the CTO. Yep. Really? So she would have worked under John O'Reese. Oh, funny. John O'Reese. You know, I grew up with that kid. John O'Reese yeah. and I, I have pictures of me and John in, in that SEMO pack picture I have. That's John O'Reese in the front. Oh, for real? Oh, I know. John you know, Reese. You know, he lives here in Clearwater now. I run into him every now and then. I have known that kid. We went to Mace Kingsley together. We have been, we were good friends from 1990, 1986, all the way through until I went up to uh, gold. Yeah. Like he was one of my closest friends. Also a nice guy. I hope you had a good experience with him, but. Um, um but he was very aloof. He was also sort of one of these ridiculously good looking Sea Org members, which is weird because they're sort of in a league of their own. Right. Like, you know, and he was an officer. And so I'm not sure he and I ever spoke more than five words to each other in four years. Wow. Uh, it's a weird thing for me to mention about him. But if you go, what's the most obvious thing about John O'Reese? You're like that. He's insanely good looking is the most obvious thing about him. Are we talking about the same guy? We must be John. There's no other John O'Reese. Yeah. Uh, tall, dark okay. hair. Yeah. Hey, he was a runner, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm just saying a yeah, guy can appreciate do you remember him running or no? Do you, or did you not have that relationship with him? Well, if I don't remember him, you, you know, Asho didn't exercise with CLO folks, mm. but I mean, he was, he was a slender dude. Yes. That's John Reese for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He was a, um, a very big okay. childhood friend of mine. Yeah. So anyway, so I don't, I don't know that I know Barbara. Okay. Um, but it's amazing. I, I, I think people who watch enough of our videos get to the point where they realize we all know each other by we're, we're all separated by only one degree of separation. <laughs> right. If you ever need any evidence that Scientology literally has less than 30,000 members, it's that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for sure. For sure. But I find, by the way, living in LA, it's unbelievable. Like I'll find two to three degrees of separation for a lot of Scientology folk, just even living um, where I live in Agora or even, uh, even in Malibu. Cause obviously Malibu actually used to be a hub of Scientology back in the fifties, uh, mm -hmm. in, in Los Angeles County, believe it or not. Uh, so then when, when your mom, um, basically went back into the Sea Org, at, were you considered declared at this point? Like, I guess it's weird to me that you're you at this point you're connected to mark headley your brother nathan's connected to you and scientology has no problem whatsoever with this sea org member uh living with nathan this whole time and by the way i'm assuming 
that she was still a Sea Org member the entire time. It's not like she routed out. She was right. just considered on leave. Medi they probably considered a, a medical leave of some type. I don't even know what they would call it. Right. But it's not like she routed out of the Sea Org and then she routed back in via the EPF or something. And she states to this day, apparently, that she was just trying to help Nathan out and, and because she was worried about him. But of course, there's no way that she said, I'm worried about my son and got permission to leave without any consequences. So she was definitely sent to be with him. I don't know what the story was on, on everything. Nathan, Nathan does say he was part of the basics uh, program and he was, I believe, in the warehouse shipping at, at Flag. And so he has a bunch of stories about credit card fraud related to and charging accounts for those books. So he believes that his knowledge of that was part of the reason why Barbara came out with them. Hmm. And we've argued about what that may be. I will always go back to this one fact. The reason why I don't think I was ever publicly declared or may not even still be declared like Jenna is Dave does not want to piss off Ronnie and Biddy or did not uh, want to piss off Ronnie and Biddy at the time. Yeah, um, That's why Justin wasn't declared a number of reasons. I, there's always some connection to that. But that being said, what's still very strange is I tell you is Biddy's sister, Sarah was declared. So hmm. I don't know how, you know, we're trying to apply logic to, <laughs> to insanity. Uh, it doesn't work. It, so it's, you know, well, it's a weird, in, in my particular family, obviously being on the fringes of the Miscavige clan, it does. It, there's a, there's a certain special treatment sort of thing that goes on or, or kid gloves to some degree yeah. until a certain point, obviously. But like her whole story of, Oh, I was just leaving to take care of Nathan. Uh, did they leave to help you get settled when you left? No, no, no. So right. it's so stupid. It's so dumb. It's so, I mean, and to live with them too. It's just, yeah, it's, it was, it was insane. It was insane. In the end though, I'm, I'm happy and blessed. Nathan did, eventually come to to los angeles and and all that sort of stuff but yeah. but it's insane the fact that she went back is is like nightmare worthy uh and you know nathan now is is doing wonderful he's very successful um he's a good kid okay if you want to see my rock and roll songs click right on this guitar and if you want to see an, a different one of my videos uh, then you could click what's inside here if you have subscribed or not subscribe right